This is State Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist here on Oahu. And today I have a guest that flew here this morning from sunny Hilo <laughs> <laughs> to be with us on rainy Oahu today. But it's well worth it, I hope, because she wears so many hats. Uh, we'll get into that later, but uh, please welcome to our show, uh, Dr. Lorraine Friedel. It's good to be here. Welcome. So uh, some of the folks out there may have noticed that we have this tray in front of us. Mm -hmm. What is this? Tell us about this. Well, today I'm here to talk about this is uh, a Jungian-oriented sand plate therapy. And, uh, Jung sand, as in Carl Jung. Carl Jung, yes, okay. correct. Yeah, there's many ways that therapists use sand and miniatures or toys. And today I wanted to talk about sand play, which is a depth-oriented model. So there are three roots to sand play. A lot of people don't know that, um, but one of the roots is play therapy, which is common. Uh, another root has to do with the Jungian depth psychology, this understanding of using symbols and myth and telling one's story to get at unconscious materials and to integrate one's personality. Uh -huh. And then the third root is Buddhism, uh, and it's in service to the idea of interconnectedness and stilling the mind and getting connected with what's inside, uh, finding what's sacred inside, and what we share with others. And so those are the roots of sand play. How did you first decide to become a sand play therapist? Why? Well, nearly 30 years ago, um, I was in a training, actually, with an art therapist who exposed us to sand play. And uh, I just was very, uh, you know, she asked for a volunteer to try it in front of the group. and. I said, I'll try it, and I couldn't believe uh, what happened when I put these miniatures in sand and what it revealed to me in terms of what it, it gave back. Uh, and so I was sold in that moment and wanted to share this with others and learn as much as I can about it. Found so, out that it's a long road. <laughs> so you, you say what it revealed to me. I, I'm, tell me more about that. So we're innocently in sand play. Uh, what you do is imagine that there are two trays of sand. Uh -huh. uh, one is typically wet, one is uh -huh. dry, uh, and there's a room full of, of miniatures. And, Little uh, objects like this. Uh huh. And one goes in following their own inner prompting and chooses from amongst the shelves and creates an image in the sand. That sounds very highfalutin, their own inner prompting. Right. So does that translate to Oh, I think I'll take that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So with kids, they don't need any introduction, right? They right. see the toys and they make the sand. Mm. With adults, sometimes we have too many mind. We wonder, well, what's this about? And so sand play can be particularly useful for people that intellectualize. Uh, so rather than talking about what's going on, they're actually making what's happening. Uh, and you mean then, consciously making a story? They may, or they may make anything they want. So in the beginning, uh, you're following a whole series. Uh, so sometimes you uh, come to sand play therapy for only one session, but often you come for a whole process. And what that means is that you're creating something every week or each time you come, and it follows a sequence uh, of development uh, of how your psyche is changing over time. So if I come in every Wednesday at 2. OK. <laughs> Next Wednesday when I come at 2, will I get a, a blank tray of sand or will the one that I did last week be there for me to fool around with? <laughs> well, actually, you get a new canvas every week uh -huh. um, and the sand is your canvas. And the way that it works, though, is that you'll sit and we'll talk about what's going on in your life, uh, maybe go into the sand with an intention or none at all. Oh, so before we start playing with the sand, we might, I might come and tell you you know, that my dog is just running amok. <laughs> right, so you may have some, something that's really affecting you in your life that you would like to talk about or maybe celebrate something. Mm. Uh, and then what happens is you go into the sand and create a scene, and often we're surprised. That's what happened to me. I went thinking I was creating one thing, and then suddenly I realized that maybe this person doesn't need to be in my life, or wow, maybe I have a passion about this thing that I didn't even know about that was so glaring. And so sand play can uncover passions and potentialities as well as conflicts that we may or may not be fully aware of. 
do you make interpretations? Like, do you see something and you go, oh, it looks like you've got a thing about your mother over here? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, uh, in Jungian-oriented sound play, and Dora Kalp is the founder. She was a Swiss uh, psychoanalyst. And uh, we don't interpret at the time that the sound play is made. However, there's, uh, so there's a sense that suppose you created the scene uh -huh. and um, you, you, you made it, and we would sit and just fully realize what it might mean for you. And so sometimes that's sitting in silence together, connected, Sometimes it's you noticing how big, how much attention you spent on a certain area, uh, and then making some connections in your life. Wow, I am spending an awful lot of time and attention on this issue, uh, and, and having an in increased appreciation about that. So let's pretend for a moment that I created this one. Mm -hmm. right? You actually created this one, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I brought some of my portable oh, yeah, sand well, tray. Why don't we switch it? So we don't have to make believe. You sure. created this yes, one. Yes, I sure we'll, did. So you be the patient, I'll be the therapist, okay. right? So I notice, Lorraine, that uh, there's a lot of time symbols here. <laughs> Is that, would I say something like that? Right, you can share a reflection, you know, something oh. that you notice, but mostly we allow the person who created it to just share as little or as much as they would like oh, so to. So I would say, tell me about what you made today. Right. And I might say, gosh, I noticed that I, I put this time symbol in there and another symbol of time, and I really do feel pressure about time. Mm. And I might begin to talk about that. Or in sam play, which is diff it's different than verbal therapy, in that we want the symbols to stay in the psyche until they, they're brought to consciousness. When you say psyche, what do you mean? So I'm a neuropsychologist uh -huh. and also a sound play teacher. And so we have the brain, which is the physical mechanism. And then we have the psyche, which is the soul or that mystical aspect of who we are as human beings. Okay. And so often uh, therapies are can be very mechanistic or we're going to talk about this particular way you're thinking and if you change that thinking your life will change. Mm -hmm. um, Cognitive and all, behavioral therapy. Right. right. And all there, there's a place for those kinds of therapies. I think as humans we're looking for something deeper. We want to understand more about who we are in our center and, and how we fit into this world. What is our purpose? And so by connecting to more unconscious material like dreams and symbols, which is what Sam Play helps us connect to, um, we can get in touch with deeper layers of our psyche and, um, and realize our full potential. So how do you know when it's working? Well, uh, there are right now over 30 studies of sand play uh, therapy out there. Uh, a lot of the studies are being done in Japan, Korea, uh, China. Um, about half of those studies are randomized controlled trials. And so we're finding that sound play is effective in treating anxiety, depression. Uh, I have a particular research interest in trauma uh, because sound play acts at the level of the unconscious. Uh, often trauma is stored very deep in our brains mm -hmm. uh, when we try to access uh, tra trauma material, which is implicit memories. Uh, we overreact. We get uh, Right, explosive. you can re-traumatize somebody. Mm -hmm. And in sound play, we can access those things at a deep level and gradually bring them to consciousness and rework them over time. And so it's very powerful in, in trauma. And uh, from a neuropsych perspective, um, we, we've been studying about four aspects of sand play that are particularly relevant in the treatment of trauma. One is the relational safety. There is no trauma treatment we know without safety. We have so to So relationship with the therapist. Mm -hmm, absolutely. The therapist creates what Dora Kolf called the free and protected space. Uh -huh. So you come in, there is no judgment. You can create whatever aggressions, whatever pain, mm -hmm. whatever excitement you're feeling that day, whatever calls to you, mm -hmm. and then you sit with that. Um, the second piece is you're actually using your hands. And so there's a somatosensory, a connection to your body. You're actually making something, which triggers activation across multiple brain systems, mm -hmm. including uh, deeper centers of the brain and connection to our bodies, which sometimes we can get pretty heady and disconnected and talk about things, but never really uh, live that. Experience them. it. Mm -hmm. So this is experiencing if, through effective action. And then the other piece is we get to tell the story in symbols. And telling our trauma story can be very difficult. And yet story, stories are important to share and to heal. And then the last piece is we get to be mindful, the mindful participation of of very carefully just stilling ourselves, taking a break from everyday life, 
and going into ourselves uh, becomes really important. So mindfulness is the fourth component that brings about this sense of balance and neural integration. So you mentioned that a lot of your research has been with um, uh, brain trauma? Mm -hmm. Yeah, different that? kinds of trauma. So uh, the first research I did was with uh, folks with traumatic brain injury and wanted to know uh, some of these have severe aphasia. My dad... Aphasia uh, can't speak. Yes, cannot uh -huh. speak. Um, different kinds of difficulties with motor. Uh, in verbal therapies, they were perseverating, which means they would get stuck on these concepts. Right. They lacked awareness of their deficits. And by giving them the opportunity to choose uh, and create... Choose in, the pieces. Choose pieces, uh, mold the sand any way they wanted, and construct something. They had a sense of mastery, and they were able to communicate in ways that they were not able to verbally. Uh, uh, and in doing so, they were able to get at the underlying issues, which were often grief, trauma, uh, a sense of feeling uh, they needed normalcy in their life after their traumatic brain injury. So really powerful stuff. That, Does that include people who have suffered a stroke? Uh, yes. Uh, some of the research participants, in fact, one suffered a, a stroke as well. So. well. so we live in a island surrounded by sand beaches. Mm -hmm. Do you need a tray? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we, we all have some memory of playing in the sand, you know. Sandboxes. Yeah, and Jung himself, Carl Jung, sat on the lakes of, uh, in Switzerland creating in the sand there and, that's, uh -huh. uh, and found he could do so much through play that he couldn't do with his thinking mind. And so he was a fan of sand play and, and told Dora Kolf, actually, um, she did her analysis with Emma Jung, his wife, the founder of sand play. And he told her to go use sand play and apply his methods to her work so that this, the Jungian world could reach children. And so that's part of our roots in sand play. I mean, kids, and not just kids. I mean, it seems like everybody loves to play in the sand, mm -hmm. except we're told that when we're not a kid anymore, right. it's not Sad, cool. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I notice I live right next to a beach and mm -hmm. You bring some toys down to a beach and give it to people, mm -hmm. they're never bored. Right. right. They can just play and play and play. And In play, we're safe, we're spontaneous. Our neural pathways are open to change and possibility, novelty, creativity. There's a lot of research on how play itself stimulates creativity. Mm -hmm. That's why the corporate uh, America is interested in play and what that does for people and making sure that employees have opportunities for play because it expands our mind and our capacities to create and get in what, what's called our flow. Uh, it seems there's a big difference between this kind of play and playing a video game. Exactly. Right. I mean, <laughs> is that the tactile aspect about it that's different? Because with video games, you're just hitting keys and playing with a mouse. Yes, and with sand play, there's an intention of going in. It's, it's a ritualized space, so the same thing. You come in, you get centered in the sand. So there's uh, often people will use their hands this way. There's mm. bilateral stimulation, a calming effect when we put our hands in the sand and we just start molding and centering ourselves, mm -hmm. and then open, opening ourselves to possibilities. Um, so Carl Jung used a lot of his philosophy in psychotherapy. A lot of people ask, well, how does he do psychotherapy? I had that question when I did my research. How does Carl Jung do psychotherapy? And one of the things I learned is that he believes in this idea of generous attention, mm -hmm. that if the therapist can give the client generous attention, then their wholeness of their personality will come forward. They will be who they really can be. Mm. Um, but trauma can disrupt that opportunity to be whole, and different complexes can disrupt that. And so sometimes we need that attention from another individual, right? So play, safety, relationship, all those things come together in Sam play. Speaking about general attention, I just got a little message in my ear. We have to give some generous attention to a 60 second <laughs> break. We'll be right back. Don't touch that mouse. Aloha, I'm Winston Welch. And every other Monday at 3 p.m., you can join me at Out and About, a show where we explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. So please join us every other Monday at 3, and we'll see you then. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic 
Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. But grandmother, what big eyes you have. She said. What are you doing? Research says reading from birth accelerates our baby's brain development. Push. Oh. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Welcome back to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. I'm still with Lorraine Friedel, and we're talking right now about sand play. So what kind of patients, what demographic age range uh, are appropriate for sand play, and what, who do you work with? Well, often people will see the sand and the toys, and they say, oh, this is for children, yeah. or do you have a cat? Or <laughs> <laughs> they'll look at all the toys. Do you collect things? Um, but in reality, sand play is, is a wonderful modality with children and adults alike. And um, I particularly spend time uh, doing sand play with therapists that are interested in doing their own personal work, um, as well as at Pacific Quest, I'm the clinical director, and we use sand play with adolescents and young adults in the context of a holistic healing environment. Tell us more, what, what is Pacific Quest? So Pacific Quest is um, an outdoor behavioral health program uh, for adolescents and young adults. We serve kids 14 to 24 uh, on the big island of Hawaii. And the kids come to us uh, from all over uh, with a lot of different uh, issues, mostly depression, anxiety, unable to adjust maybe to high school or the transition to college, uh, maybe spending too much time in their dorm rooms uh, on you know, gaming or social media and losing track of what's important to them in school. Uh, other forms of addiction that might they might pick up along the way. Uh, and so they come to Pacific Quest. We have um, horticultural therapy. Uh, they eat perfectly portioned whole food, anti-inflammatory diet. So they we're looking at uh, making sure they're unplugged, eating right, sleeping with the cycles of the sun. They don't have the their sun. cell phones with them. <laughs> we absolutely don't, don't allow cell phones or electronics. It's a chance for them to reset, to get connected to nature, to eat right, and then to really delve into the reasons that they're there uh, individually and with their families. How do they get chosen to be part of Pacific Quest? Well, um, their circumstances in life um, make it where their families usually are the ones who are saying it's not working anymore, mm. uh, you need to get some help. Uh, and through that process, they choose us as uh -huh. opposed to perhaps other programs. Uh, sometimes being in Hawaii helps. Uh, sometimes the fact that they get to be outside uh, in the gardens, um, how long is the program? Uh, about 10 weeks to 12 weeks, uh, they depending. Live there. Mm -hmm. And they live with us, uh, and they're in, in camps uh, with each other, uh, and they go through a rites of passage experience. There's a lot of different components, uh, and sand play is one of those things that they do. And we wow. have an outdoor uh, sand play holly uh, uh, in one of the camps, which brings sand play to them outside. And then in the young adult program, uh, we have an indoor uh, sand play uh, room. What does it look like? You say camps. I went to sleepaway camp as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> well, just imagine all of these uh, different gardens and vegetables and uh, fruit trees uh, deep in Hawaii on the mountainside in Ka'u. Uh, we have uh, different uh, camps for the kids, uh, and they have a kitchen, outdoor kitchen, and uh, little hollies, little places where they can have some quiet time alone. Uh, and Who runs it? Uh, so Pacific Quest is privately run. Uh -huh. uh, our owners are Suzanne and Mike McKinney, uh, and uh, I serve in the role of clinical director there, and we have a medical director, uh, oh. Dr. Britta Zimmer, and we have integrative psychiatry. It's a very uh, comprehensive program for young people. Um, I just got distracted. I don't know what mm -hmm. they said in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. <laughs> I'm hearing voice. No. Um, is, it must be expensive. I mean, is, does insurance pay for this? No, but insurance pays for some of it. And so oh. folks will come up with the, the funds ahead of time, and then we give them super bills for them to then uh, bill the insurance at a different time. Um, so kids, you mentioned kids uh, that have various addictions, alcohol, drugs. Uh, yeah. Can this be referred there? Yeah, and actually, it usually uh, the primary is depression or anxiety or some sort of trauma adjustment mm -hmm. issues, and then the kids pick up alcohol and drugs sometimes along the way. So it's just not unusual to have comorbid uh, alcohol or drug issues. 
And uh, in fact, a while back in 2015, uh, out of the University of New Mexico, I did some research on sand play with young people that had opioid dependence and uh, co-occurring trauma. And uh, in that research, uh, we put together based on this opioid, uh, you know, it, there's a whole epidemic going on. And the government at that time said, we want pilot projects. We want something to help reach these young people. And so we took evidence-based substance abuse, which the kids were calling workbook therapy, where they would come in a couple nights a week and you know, do uh, worksheets. Um, and we added all of these experiential modalities, including sand play. Uh -huh. And in the end, uh, we, we saw tremendous results in terms of improvements in their well-being, jobs, uh, family relationships, reduction or abstinence from drugs and alcohol. Um, and then they f found the surprise finding. And that's when these young people were asked what made the difference for them in their program. Overwhelmingly, they responded that it was sand play therapy. Oh, wow. And it, it surprised me because I put it in there thinking, well, maybe this would help. But the program was based on other modalities. Um, and so we learned a lot from them in focus groups. They talked about how they could tell their stories. Nobody was saying it for them. They could just see what was going on for themselves. Um, they had privacy and chances for reflection. Um, and so they were the ones uh, who talked about sand play. Um, and we concluded that maybe uh, that if we incorporate sand play in residential programs, in outpatient programs with substance abuse, treatment of trauma, that maybe we would improve treatment engagement. Because this is a huge issue with young people, uh, especially traumatized or folks that are addicted, is engagement. Do they stay in treatment long enough for it to benefit? And this particular research showed that sand play helped with that engagement. So, so after they graduate, can, I mean, like, if I learned how to do sand play mm -hmm. uh, with you, could I again get my own tray, take it home, and just play with do sand <laughs> play on my own every night? Would that you know, be some of our students will say, oh, I got a little sand tray, and they'll make a meditation tray at home. But the, the whole process of sand play is relational. So it is involved with a therapist. You know, if you had a sand tray and you were making some things, we would think that'd be a form of meditation. Uh -huh. But the addition of the therapist as witness, there to help you process, to monitor, uh, creates the therapeutic environment. It's, I'm glad you said that because um, a lot of what I see doing talk therapy with patients uh, I, I mean, it seems that every study that's done about the different modalities of therapy always comes down to, it's about the relationship, you know, is there transference between the patient and the therapist? Absolutely. And um, so I'm, I find that, like you found it surprising that they mm -hmm. said the sand play was the best, but, and, and I thought, well, that's not relational, it's only relational to the objects. But no, you're saying there's also a relationship to the therapist yes, in the room. Absolutely. And as a neuropsychologist, I'm particularly interested in the exchange that's happening in this intrapsychic field, brain to brain, person to person. And some of the neuroimaging studies being done now are talking about how a synchrony develops between the sand player and the therapist during the sand play. And so, Even if the therapist is not saying anything. Right. I am exhausted in a sand play session. I am generously tuning into what's going on um, and channeling this kind of energy and being as fully present, noticing everything that's happened, the sequence. So I can share, I know exactly, for example, that once they put something difficult in, then they followed it with something, maybe a resource, and I'm watching their, the, the, the conflict and defense system in action. I'm so wait, fully present. Uh, you lost me there. <laughs> which of these <laughs> are happens. difficult and which would be a resource? Well, so if I were creating this, well, I'd created this tray, right? So <laughs> here's this lovely little egg with gold inside. Uh -huh. um, but in front of it, we have Cerberus, the three-headed dog, and we have this uh, two-headed snake uh, with fangs and these poor little rabbits there are in danger. Those there's, are scary. There's a mask. And so it seems to get to this gold and this potential in the egg, there are some forces that need to be dealt with. Uh -huh. um, and I have resources. You know, I have spiritual resources I see in the tray. We've got Yoda here. <laughs> um, <laughs> got some flowers. You know, and you can see here a place of loss and grieving. Wait, what's the place of loss? Well, there's some tombstones there. Um, and this is a weeping oh. Buddha. And so there was an expression of loss there. Um, there's a treasure 
Uh, and so there's these different energy spots in a sand play uh, that become really important to just take in. And if the person wants to talk about it, if they're ready, they'll talk about it and gain insight. But we're not worried about that as sand play therapists. We want the image to stay in the psyche, in the unconscious, until it's ready. Uh, and in that process, neurologically, we're holding images all the time. Sounds like dreams. Exactly. In fact, one of my research participants said, sand play is like dreaming with toys. Mm. And there's not many places where we're able to give our unconscious attention. And so what happens in this day and age is we s spend our lives distracting ourselves and repressing energies that then become destructive in the form of addiction, violence. And in sand play, we give a place for those energies to come forward and be expressed. Uh, it's particularly important for young men. Uh, we found it, research on aggression uh, with young men, uh, giving them a place to, to express it uh, and work through it is, is really important. I work a lot with couples. Does anybody do sand play with couples? Yes, I do, um, and others. Uh, in the traditional uh, coffee and sand play, it's traditionally an uh, individual method. Uh -huh. However, uh, it's been expanded for use with couples, with groups. Um, we have some rules if we use sand play with couples in that uh, you know, to honor what the other person made, to not make fun or question. What do you mean to put that there? No. <laughs> but it can be a really intimate experience to create something, your partner's present, uh, and then to share and talk on the way home about what you experienced uh, brings people closer together. Because again, these surprises come up when we allow ourselves to create. Yeah, I would think you could see a whole different side to your partner. Mm -hmm. Very vulnerable and needs uh, to be held. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, how could somebody? How could somebody find you if wow. they wanted to do well, that? Well, uh, they could find me at Pacific Quest or at my website. PacificQuest.com. Uh, PacificQuest.org. Dot org. Uh, as well as LorraineFriedel.com. Uh huh. <laughs> yes. And you recommend it for all ages? Yes. Um, sand play is is a very, uh, as you can see, it, it brings up a lot of uh, defenses in people sometimes. Uh, what is that? It's, is it is it research based? It seems really weird. Um, however, uh, you know, in the right hands and with the people that are are, uh, I would say, uh, moved uh, to do it, it's a very very powerful modality. Well, Lorraine Friedel, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for, for coming on talking our show today. about Sam Play. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, it's, it. It's really great. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, bye bye. Tune in next time to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. Aloha.